I was gonna do a little bit of like a, a little bit of like a jump scare, where the first clip wasn't me in the car right now, but it would have been me, just doing my normal fucking morning cardio. Can I get a get a little uh, give me a little bait and switch? I, mean, I thought you were coming for a leg day, but really you just get thirty minutes of straight pedaling. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. That's uh, that's a little bit fucking silly. But do not uh. Do not like. Do not take my. Do not take my jokey manner, to, uh, as though I'm taking a, a light-hearted approach to the cardio. You guys need to start doing. It. And anybody that's done it, or if you know somebody who doesn't, I mean, I kn I know your mom goes on fucking runs, or I know your dad fucking, I don't know, whatever. You know somebody who does cardio on on a consistent basis. Odds are, they like it, and there's a reason they're doing it, not just because they want to torture themselves. They're reaping the benefits, but no more cardio talk. This isn't a cardio video. This is, this is legs. This is a leg day. So, plan for legs. <laughs> kind of to be determined, you know. I need to. I've got a couple factors at play, <laughs> which might mess with me a little. One, I'm not sure if I want to do really heavy or maybe more moderate loading on pressing today, because uh, I'm a little bit torn. You know, it's like when I try to really go as heavy as I can for like. A 10 rep set I can pretty much only do that for like two solid sets and then I've got to back off the lighter weight and even when I back off to the lighter weight my whole system is so fatigued I just end up feeling like I want to do leg extensions or just sissy squatting instead but whenever I do more like four plates or three plates on the Smith machine or squats then I don't hit as seriously abrupt of a state of failure as I do with like the really heavy weight and if I do five sets of like four plates on the Smith machine, that's more like a, a crewing quad damage over those course of the five sets, which each set in particular isn't as intense as like the ones with five or five and a half plates or whatever. But the fact that I do five instead of just two, I kind of feel like that's a little bit better for me. But it's, you know, fucking, I see videos of guys with massive legs training in very different ways. Like some guys where their fucking leg days have zero sets to failure and they're just doing solid sets to, you know, reasonable uncomfortability, but not, like, you know, not all the way to fucking failure. And, I mean, I can get a badass leg pump taking every set to, like, five reps in reserve. So I'm not, uh... Never catch me saying, like, there's only one way to go about it, right? I'm, uh... I'm open to the fucking lifting universe to show me the best way. Or at least get me on the right track. But we'll see. Hamstrings is gonna be the start. But, uh, yeah, start with hamstrings, hamstring curls, almost, not even almost guaranteed, that's the starter, just because it ends up being a really good primer before going into RDLs, and for whatever reason, these last few days of doing the Smith Machine RDLs have felt so good, like, I haven't been able to really squeeze my hamstrings like this, really ever, maybe, it's probably just because I haven't been doing as many RDLs as I should, but I really like it. So RDLs will be involved, that's for sure. So I think hamstring curls followed by some RDLs. Maybe back to hamstring curls. And that'll, that's all that's going to be necessary for me on the hamstring side of things. And then once the real lift starts being quads, that's where I'll kind of decide. I've got a, at this gym in particular, this metro, I've got, I've got my pickings, you know. They've got, a, they've got a couple different kinds of leg presses from like old, like Nautilus looking ones or Cybex ones to kind of a much more fancy, like, adjustable angle and every fucking on the seat and on the foot pad, hack squats, a really cool pendulum, like, hip press, if you know what I'm talking about there. I mean, in terms of leg days, there's a reason why I come to this, pretty much this gym exclusively, at least while I'm, you know, around here where I live. It's because it's got the best leg equipment, you know? It's got as much as I could ask for. But we'll see. But no matter what quads ends up being comprised of, I'm definitely going to start on the leg extensions. I've been a very big fan of doing like two or three sets of leg extensions before anything else, any more pressing, any more sissy squats, any more anything. Just because after I do a few sets of good leg extensions, I'm warm, my quads are getting pumped, they're fully fucking activated, my knees feel nice and fucking, just, there's no other word than warmed up. But it just kind of saves me from some fucking knee pain and overall unsteadiness. If I try to squat off the rip, like set one, you know, warm up, do a plate, do two plates, do three plates, 
you know, whatever, just warm up like that, I don't think it's enough for me, you know. So when I end up doing the, uh, doing some leg extension volume before starting the rest of the leg day, I, it's just, everything just goes a lot smoother for me, you know, and I can, uh, and I say that from my own personal experience. That's not from, like, a study I read or anything, you know, just kind of, uh, that's sort of just what I've come to figure out. And that wasn't an easy lesson, you know? Like, in my mind, I was very locked into the idea of, okay, I want to do squats first. Because I don't want to do anything else. I don't want to do anything that's going to tire my quads before my squats. Because I want to squat really heavy and be really strong and, like, be totally ready for the weight. Because in my mind, I'm like, if I pre-exhaust myself with anything else, then my squat set is going to, for you know, in some reason in my mind, like, be subpar. When... You know, that's, I was really locked into that mentality, but for whatever reason, I eventually I saw somebody or I heard it from someone, I don't know, and I was like, you know what, let's try squatting once I've already got a bit of a quad pump. And for me, that adjustment to my training ended up being a pretty good fucking move because I haven't gone back, you know? So that's um, one, more little, one more little topic of discussion before we actually get to the gym is it's kind of fucking hard, you know? It's hard to tell people exactly how to do shit. And I'm talking me included. You know, I'm fucking... Over the course of the last, like... Coming up... Yeah. I'm about six years deep now. I started, um... Yeah, I started lifting summer 2018. So I'm I'm six years deep as a lifter. I've been kind of milking like the five and a half. No, it's been... So over the last six fucking years, I think that I've made pretty serious fucking improvements to my training. In terms of actual, like, cutting back on unnecessary work, getting way better about my fucking diet. You know, I've got no, uh, whoops, let me, uh, I'll pick you up at the stop sign. Must not have screwed you down tight enough. I'm sure that spooked you, huh? <laughs> What's down there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. There you go, buddy. You all right? <laughs> there we go. Okay. No. So um. So what I was saying was, when it comes to making adjustments to your training, it's kind of hard to fucking accept other people's advice. I, you've seen me over the course of the last fucking, I don't know, however long, right? I'm getting bad. I'm not doing only treats. This bulk is not going to consist of only treats, right? I think I'm getting a little smarter. The training, oh, man. My training, I think, is much more effective now than it was even four, not even two years ago. Like, the amount of volume that I'm doing and my kind of understanding of, like, what actually makes up a good workout for me and, like, okay, should I even take a rest day or should I still train, like, even though I don't end up taking a lot of rest days, that might be something I still need to work on some, but, you know, if I do need them, I'm going to take them, right? And I know a lot of guys where they, they're, they're not Cybertruck spotted, but they're not, um, they're not actually putting in all the effort that they fucking need to, and uh, it's, it's really, it sucks to see, you know, because I'll talk to these guys, and they're, you know, they're taking everything serious, they're fucking, they say they're bulking, they're, you know, they're working, and I'm like, dude, I'm not the form police, I'm not the form police, but I see atrocious fucking form on the regular, and I, I, I hope I didn't contribute to that too much, you know, with all the ego lifting TikTok jokes that I would post, but, you know, even when I do unnecessarily heavy loads, I've still got solid range of motion. You know, is it ego lifting if you squat six plates for actual reps? I wouldn't say so. I think that's heavy lifting, but like really nasty fuck, like just shoulder presses with the shoulders like, or no, no, like chest press with the shoulders like this. And you're, I'm seeing these guys with their elbows all over the place. And then, you know, guys who really don't understand that the reason they're not growing is because their diet, the, their diet isn't even a fucking factor. Like they're not even trying to get into their macros or their protein and everything else, you know, so it just, it just sucks for me to see, because these guys are in the gym all the fucking time, they're lifting consistently, they're not being fucking lazy about it, 
So they're already spending this much energy to right, be a lifter pretty much. But they're not going that extra few little feet in terms of their sort of, let's just say, amount of locking in to deal with your fucking, you know, your diet. Get more than 100 grams of protein in per day and get it from like a real food source and not just like two protein shakes. One that you had for breakfast and one that you had before bed. You know, it's... So what I'm trying to say there is... As you progress and as you work out for long enough, you should start to get smarter about things. And hopefully, if you've got, you know, kind of an internal drive to improve your gains, then you need to be, you know, humble enough. Or humble's not even the right word. I'm, uh, but you just kind of follow my sentiment here. Like you have to be able to back up and say, okay, I might be wrong. This might, okay, I'm, I'm not. This guy's actually right. I, I think I need to change something about my training. And that's tricky. That is tricky for the fucking human mind to say, yeah, crap, I'm actually wrong. You're right. Thank you for telling me that. You know, it, that's that's a hard sell for the fucking, you know, the human psyche. Because you're putting yourself in a vulnerable position. You're like, oh, wait. Well, it's, it's, I'm, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm going to keep doing my... The, blah, 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 blah. You know, so try to, when I think of the real solid lifter, the guy who's going to make gains on a perpetual basis, you know, and he's going to be a different guy, lifting-wise at least, year after year after year, that's somebody who's got an open mind, you know. He's not closed in to one specific kind of approach or whatever else. He's like, you know, he's open to new ideas. So if you try to close yourself off and, like, get so, like, adamant about you're doing things your way and, like, I don't want to listen to anybody else, I... You know, it's just, you're setting yourself up for maybe not failure, but you're not setting yourself up as well as you could for success. But that's also a bit of a double-edged sword, you know? Because if you're too open to new ideas, if you're too, like, um, I was about to say influential, I don't know. If you're too influenceable to the point where, like, you listen to what anybody says ever, and every time you hear new information, you're like, oh my god, that sounds so cool, I'm going to start doing that. And you start changing your workout routine every fucking week and like you're constantly talking to your to your buddies like, oh, what workout split are you doing? Oh, I'm gonna try the Arnold split this week. I bet that's gonna start to work. I you know, not to sound pretentious or anything, but this is these are real conversations. These are real fucking in the gym conversations where I'm like, dude, I haven't been making any gains. I should switch to the Arnold split. As though changing what day you hit each muscle group is gonna have any noticeable impact at all onto your results you know that's um that's something which unfortunately gets the spotlight in terms of like an important decision of your workout like it, it doesn't matter you know i do arm days because i like a big arm pump but if my workout split for the week was like quads and triceps hamstrings and chest fucking shoulders and calves biceps and lats as long as i hit everything even throughout the week twice a week as long as i'm hitting everything hard I'm going to grow, you know? So be more focused on the actual fucking real important parts of working out, right? Your intensity, trying to improve your actual, like, technique so that you're really fucking squeezing and burning and everything, right? Pushing yourself hard, going home, drinking enough fucking fluids, being hydrated, well-fed, eating your protein, getting a good night's rest. That's what's really going to make the fucking difference. And anything else is really just fucking preference-based, you know? So don't, uh... Don't get too, don't get too scared of how, or not scared, but don't get too, um, like, don't get your panties in a bunch. That's all I'm saying there. As long as you're lifting hard and you know it, keep it up. Don't let anybody get in your head. But I'm going to warm up my calves a little bit before hamstrings because that makes the back of my knee feel a little bit better, like where my hamstrings tie into my sort of shin and everything. And then we can start uh, what I would assume is going to be a moderate like normal controllable weight squeezing holding reps and then go from there so let's uh, let's get started I will yeah instead of single leg let's do double leg be a little quicker about it but still nothing crazy like I'm not even trying to do the full stack I'm doing as much weight as I feel I can squeeze hard but still get a, got a, a good amount of tension you, you know what I'm saying Yeah. 
Oh my gosh. Whew. Two more just like that. Oh. I'm trying not to use any fucking momentum. Oh, and the fucking reps are showing up. One more set in that style. <laughs> Three flights will be good. I've got to stand on a steppy stool because if I stand on the ground, I run into the bottom of the range of motion of the Smith machine. But let's get amped up. Squeeze my hamstrings hard. Don't stop till they're on fucking fire. Two more, I think. And again, hamstring RDLs are fucking tricky. You know, this is not something I would necessarily say is as simple as feeling your chest on like a fucking pec deck. This is kind of an acquired skill. But once you can learn to relax your glutes and somehow pull with your hamstrings, it'll just kind of click for you. But I'm gonna catch my breath. Two more. Start to use a little bit too much glue to lower back. Good set though. Whew. I was getting a little bit too excited. Did those reps in the last set a little too fast. So I'm gonna ease up on the control or up the control on this one. Oh, my God. 
Now I get to decide what's better. Call it at hamstrings right there. Do another set or two of hamstring curls. Before either one of those things, I gotta breathe and lose some of this lower back pump I just got. Oh man. Good RDLs though, goddammit. Hip hinging is going to be more frequent. One more finishing set. Five reps on the left side, five on the right, five on the left, five on the right, like that. But really light. I mean, 50 fucking pounds. I'm just trying to squeeze and really finish off my hamstring pump. Plus, <laughs> I kind of want my lower back pump to go away a little bit. To the point where I might take a little bit extra longer on leg extensions before I move on to any pressing. Just because, you know, squatting with a quad pump, that's cool. Love it. It doesn't hinder the... Uh, the stability, the movement I feel, but squatting with a serious lower back pump, that can be a little freaky, especially in like something as unstable as a barbell squat or even a Smith machine squat. If your lower back is seriously fatigued, I mean, that could compromise your whole fucking, you know, stability, your whole chain of fucking everything. So just something to keep in mind, you know, if you have the fucking craziest lower back pump of your life, maybe don't throw on hundreds of pounds onto your back which, uh, and definitely don't do that without safeties. Oh my goodness. Well, I'll talk about that in a minute. Let's just hit this shit. All right. Let's find a leg extension. Oof. I have now re-locked in. So I've, I've been sitting here for like 10 minutes. I started with 50, 50 pounds, few reps, few reps, 70 pounds, few reps, few reps, 90, 110, 150. Now, uh, 180, but the, the number itself doesn't matter. I mean, this, I'm not curling a dumbbell. This is just a weight that's on a stack on a machine. But as heavy as I can go right now without feeling any uncomfortability. I was going to say I've got a bit of a or I've had a bit of a bad habit of thinking, okay, I'm fresh, I'm strong, I'm going to load up leg extensions as heavy as possible even with one leg. To the point where I'd be doing like nearly the stack of this machine just with one fucking single leg and I, I would literally like tweak my... Uh, kind of medial quad or just kind of some stuff in here because it's just so much tension in such a kind of unnatural way. So I've kind of curbed my enthusiasm for the crazy weights, but moderate and how I'm going to go about it usually, or at least I've been on a kick of doing sets like this is instead of just complete failure on the right leg and then complete failure on the left, I've been liking doing five reps on the left, five on the right, five on the left, five on the right, back and forth, back and forth and kind of like a uh, a rest pause sort of fashion and partially just because I like it but also it kind of makes it easier for me to hit failure you know like I'll get to a point where I do five reps five reps 
go back and forth like three or four times and I'm like, okay, I'm still feeling pretty strong. But then I'll hit like that fourth or that fifth like loop back and forth. And the weight will suddenly get fucking three times harder. I'm like so fatigued to the point where I can actually get to what I would at least equate to close to total failure. Sometimes my first set of leg extensions isn't awesome because I'm not like all the way warmed up. I'm not totally able to really push it to the point where I know I could have got like six more reps and I just gave up because it was starting to burn. And then sometimes I don't even count my first set and I say, okay, that just counts as a warm up. Let's really start next. So whatever first movement that you do, I think it's probably crucial, at least for that muscle group, to do a movement which once you're warmed up, you can seriously hit at least a crazy amount of fatigue and ideally at least approach as close as you can to legit failure. But no more, no more jargon. Let's uh, let's just get in the zone here. Oh, almost forgot to buckle up. God damn it! One more at least. A little heavier. One more. Then let's do some leg press. Oh. Or hip press, rather. Oh my god. Mm. Uh. 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 
Let's move on. Oh. Eight plates on this fucking pendulum, or this hip press. This is gonna take some locking in. This is gonna take some fucking huffing and puffing. So, give me a moment to get in the zone. I really like the feeling of this though. It's like all quad, I get no glutes. That's my main gripe with any leg press. I, I, don't, I don't need a bigger dump truck, you know? I want my fucking quads and my hamstrings with the actual thighs of my legs to get bigger. So that's why I like something like this. But let me, uh, let me shut up and focus. Oh my god. Oh, thank you. I had one more though. Don't, maybe don't give me a fist bump. I could have done one more. Let's run that up though. I swear. Literally 95% quads. My glutes don't even feel worked at all. This is an awesome machine. At least it is for my build. Oh. <sighs> 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 Oh. oh my god. Okay, it's confirmed. I've officially been fucking sleeping on this machine. Two more sets. Same weight. Ideally to failure just like this one. Hmm. 
Oof. 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 One more. These are fucking nasty. Let's go finish with a leg extension and sissy squat superset. These were some fucking heavy loading leg press sets, goddammit. Oh, holy crap. Light, single leg, alternating, just like the first movement of the day. I go to do fucking 100 pounds on the leg extension, which, can, like, fresh is like nothing. <laughs> I felt like fucking 300. So this is only fucking 65 pounds. And that's also leg extension stack weight, so it probably doesn't even correlate. This is probably the equivalent of just slapping a 35 to my ankle and sitting here and fucking, you know, holding it like that. But five reps, five reps, five reps, five reps. Then some kind of sissy squat level stuff over here. And that's it, and the pose down. Quiet's got some serious fucking work today. Ugh. Let's go find some good lighting. Have a little coach lift. 
fucking chit chat reflection. Oh. Let's just fucking pose first, talk after. For one, you know, the first, not the first rule, but like probably one of the fourth laws of working out. As soon as you're fully pumped, it begins to fade. It's in your best interest not to waste too much time finding your pose down spot to see how you look. But also, I need to fucking breathe before I can focus on any complex thoughts. Oh, man. Yeah. So, what do you think? Compared to my normal leg days, how is this for a fucking leg pump? I certainly feel fucking swollen. Oh my goodness. Oh. And if you notice, I've got a nice little fucking burn line. I laid out by the pool for an extra 15 minutes too long. So my backside got fucking overcooked. Not awesome. I was about to say, <laughs> the fact that I kind of got a fucking sunburn on my back, it actually kind of played into why I think I might not have done any Smith Machine squats today. Because I bet the, uh, I kind of thought that the bar would fucking hurt my shoulders since they're a little, uh, since they're a little bit extra fucking tender from some excess UV exposure. Whew, but let's, uh, let's sit down and, dude, I cannot stress enough how much I fucking liked that leg press today. And I've done it a lot in the past. Like, that's not my first exposure to that hip press. But for whatever reason, I just haven't been making fucking use of it. I think I maybe had, like, I don't know. I've already got kind of a bias against leg presses in general, because I always get my glutes firing. And if I'm hitting my quads, if I'm doing a movement where my glutes start to come into play too much, I don't want to do that movement. I want to stop it. I want to do something that's actually quad-focused. But... Oh. I keep half burping. Now let's uh that was a really good fucking set. I guess four sets rather. So let me uh I gotta fucking catch my breath before I say anything reasonably cohesive. But legs done. I'm gonna go do some adductors. No calves because of the calves yesterday. I don't necessarily have calves like planned in the split. It's really just hit them whenever they're not sore, and I can still feel them a little bit today. But I get to leave this gym a fucking winner. That was a badass leg day. Now all I gotta do is go home, refuel, come back stronger tomorrow for fucking chest. Oh my god, let's go. All right, not gonna drop you this time. But that was a fucking killer leg day. Oh my goodness. I ended up chilling on the adductor for about, yes, I did like eight sets of like 12 or so. You know, with, uh, I kind of warmed up to the stack. But adductors, I think, it kind of ends up being more of an, or at least for me, kind of a, an accessory muscle in a way, where, you know, I'm working it, it has some serious fucking draw in terms of, uh, you know, the bigger it is, the bigger my legs are gonna look. But it doesn't require that same hype up as like those, uh, those machine leg presses, or that, uh, that hip press, I mean. So it's really just kind of something you have to do. And for the most part, if you have a muscle you're not incredibly excited to train, if you can think about it like that, then I think it'll make it a little easier for you, you know? Like, I was just talking to somebody, um, kind of an older guy, didn't, doesn't matter, but he, we were, uh, he was like, yeah, you know, I used to, I like separating my leg days, you know, fucking hamstrings on their own, quads on their own. I was like, yeah, you know, I, I like that too, right? Quads, because uh, I was telling him, like, I just finished hamstrings. Now I got to actually basically start another full workout of quads because your legs are a pretty fucking big-ass muscle. But I don't see that as a negative, you know? Leg day, I'd say, is probably one of the most demanding lifts. So, fuck, man, fucking take it with stride, you know? Fucking, uh... Kind of prove your prove your willpower. Do a fucking solid leg day, right? It's it's extra cool because not everybody can do it. You know, if you've ever done an ice bath, 
a legit one. I'm talking, I'm not talking like 70 degrees. I'm talking mid 50s for five minutes or longer. You're probably going to feel pretty accomplished afterwards because you did something that's pretty hard. Not everybody has the willpower to do. And you also get some benefits from it. You know, I'm not like an ice bath fanatic. I do like them. Um, not when I'm bulking up. They're kind of, I kind of feel like they're pretty, uh, pretty stressful. I mean, it really does put you right into a fucking flight or fight response. But dieting, I'm much more, I really uh, am a little bit more prone to do the, the ice baths and the cold showers. Minor tidbit, not to do a complete tangent, but probably don't do an ice bath or a cold shower directly after your weight training workout. Um, I'm not, it's not going to ruin your results, but the, um, you know, you got to think when you're working out, you want to really have your fucking blood flow maximized to reoxygenate your system and really get some fucking nutrients flowing around. So after your workout, I want to be in a relaxed state. My primary goal post-workout, apart from my calories, is basically, at least in a physical sense, chilling. I want to just let my body do its thing, start the recovery process, you know, eat my food, stay fully fucking hydrated, and it, it kind of just handles the rest. So after a hard, legit, like bodybuilding, muscle growth focused workout, an ice bath is not really going to be super conducive with gains because you're immediately going to fucking constrict all your fucking blood vessels. You're now pumping out cortisol because you're, I mean, you just got thrown into like what, if you didn't get out of an ice bath, that's literally a life or death experience. You know, if you get, if you get thrown into fucking cold water in the ocean, I mean, that could, that can kill you, man. You ever see the Titanic? So it's very stressful for your system. Now, in the morning, after cardio, I'm, I'm a bit more open to it, you know, because that's so, it's so far removed from your workout that I think you'd be fine. So that's my, that's my stance there. If you're interested in ice baths or cold showers, make it a morning thing. Definitely not a post-workout thing. Uh, but what did I better say? But yeah, so, you know, I get to finish this leg day and say, those are some hard sets. Push myself hard. Sweet. You know, and it's... There's really nothing too much deeper than that, which has given me that kind of sense of satisfaction I get. You know, I, I've said this a couple times already. There is a certain feeling of zen, just overall content with the universe. When you finish a hard workout and you actually pushed yourself, and then you just you sit in the car and you know you, you've done it. The goal has been achieved. And really, I mean, just fucking any level of goal achievement, that is a very solid source of satisfaction. You know, scrolling on your phone and getting a dopamine hit from like watching three TikToks or Instagram reels, that's a dopamine hit, but it's not that valuable. You know, it's not a, it's not real in a way. It's kind of a, it's a funky sort of dystopian enjoyment. Right? Whereas, you know, having some fucking fun, being physical, moving your body around, and then getting that sort of sense of satisfaction. Now that's legit. You know, that's kind of what you should. I would say kind of lean in towards more a little bit, you know, things that are, uh, if you get, if there's kind of a goal or a certain level of whatever that you want to achieve, and there's a little bit of difficulty between where you are now and where that goal is, that's what makes the goal valuable, right? So it's, a, it's that's all I'm trying to say there is, um, you know, it feels good to do a hard ass fucking leg day, but those hip presses, I re I I mean oh man, if you attach some fucking like electrodes that these science based characters are using, and it's like oh this workout this movement gave me a hundred percent activation, if you were to stick some of those electrodes on my glutes during that set of uh, hip presses, you would get at least pretty fucking low to zero glute activation because all I felt when I was doing those hip press reps were my fucking quads, and that is what I'm aiming for. So you can bet your bottom dollar that the next couple leg days, or well, I mean, as these leg days progress, as the bulk progresses and I come to this specific gym for my leg days, that hip press is going to be put to use. So now all I got to do is go home, sleep, or no, go home, eat, drink, sleep, take my multivitamins. I'll probably just edit this video. Usually I do it, usually I record the video edit it in the morning and then post it some days I, I do it the night of 
set myself up for success so I don't have to, so I, I don't forget. I've had a couple times where I've forgotten to edit it until like 6 o'clock at night instead of around noon, which I've been posting these. Yeah, I'm trying to, trying to not do that. But cardio in the morning, and when it comes to doing your cardio, I think the more that you can approach morning cardio every day, the better. You know, I, there's arguments to be made where it's like, well, what, my quads or my legs are still fatigued from my leg day yesterday. Should I still do my cardio? Or should I do cardio the day of my leg day? I mean, I'm about to work my legs. Why would I work them right now doing cardio? Isn't that going to affect the lift later? These are good questions to have. And your answer may, different from, may, uh, may differ from mine. But as far as I'm concerned, the 30 minutes of cardio that I did this morning, sitting on a seated bike pedaling, it did not affect my quad strength in the slightest. And tomorrow, when I do my 30 minutes of cardio, and this is not sprints, this is not fucking like, uh, like burpees and stair climbers or anything. This is just sitting on the fucking bike pedaling. So the cardio that I'm going to do tomorrow morning, even though my legs are going to be sore and fatigued, I don't really think it's going to hinder the recovery process. At least not to a degree which I'm really concerned about. But, I mean, that's kind of something that I take on, you know, on a day-by-day -day basis. If I wake up tomorrow morning and my legs are, like, legitimately thrashed, like, sorer than they've ever been, then I may think, okay, I probably shouldn't fucking sit on the bike and pedal for 30 minutes and get like a minor quad pump. I need to let my fucking quads sit and simmer for a minute, for a minute, for a minute and cool down before I start working them again. But as long as your legs aren't like absolutely cooked the day after your leg day, I think you're fine, man. You know, and the question of that or the, uh, the way that that question is even posed is kind of coming from an excuse seeking lifter. Like what? Everybody's asking, like, oh, well, why do I need to do my cardio? Like, what days can I skip the cardio? Nobody's ever asking, like, what days should I do the cardio? You know, it's always, like, how little can I get away with? Or, like, do I really need it at all? It's going to kill my gains. Come on, man. Come on. You know, I can almost guarantee. Now, I can't guarantee it for sure. There's fucking big dogs out there who don't do cardio. But the majority of the fucking top dogs at your gym... You know, the guys who have been lifting for years, they know what they're doing. You'd go to them for legitimate advice, and they'd be able to tell you actual valuable information. If they're taking it seriously, odds are they're doing their cardio, at least on the regular, if not reasonably frequently. And if they're not, then they probably will say, yeah, I should be doing it. I'm just being lazy. You know, I don't think any real top dog guys are skipping their cardio because they actually think no cardio is the better situation. Which I think is a pretty fucking important differentiator to say, you know? Because, I mean, I'll, I used to have days where I didn't do cardio. I skipped cardio for like months on end on previous bulking phases that I've had. And guess what? I didn't do it because I was like, oh, cardio is going to limit my gains. The only reason I, wanted to, I wasn't doing my cardio is because I was being fucking lazy, you know? So that's something which I can openly admit. <laughs> And I know I should be doing my cardio, so I do it. It's kind of as simple as that. But plan now is, like I said a second ago, chill. I need an, I'm already caught up on the boys. I'm already caught up on Demon Slayer. I see so many One Piece like clips and stuff that I don't even really feel the need to keep up with it because it keeps getting shown to me on the regular. You know what I just watched, though, was, uh, was Severance really good move on Apple TV. They made me buy a fucking month just so I could watch the uh, that those nine episodes. That show is pretty fucking cool. So if you got any TV show recommendations, leave them, uh, leave them in the comments below. I would, I would appreciate it. And maybe do a little, a little explanation. You know, if you write, like, watch this show, like, with no context, I mean, I'd, not that I'm, I sound so spoiled. But if you know a good show, and there's something special about it, throw it my way, you know. And I don't say Game of Thrones. I know Game of Thrones is really good. I'm going to start it eventually. I've seen Breaking Bad. I've rewatched it a couple times. Better Call Saul, Sopranos. Uh, yeah, those are kind of the top ones. Those are kind of the biggest, more like known ones that I've seen. 
You know, I tried watching Dexter. Eh, not doing anything for me. Like six episodes, or I think, like a season in, and I'm like, eh. Eh, whatever. So, that's my, uh, that's my question onto you. But do your cardio. Keep bulking, if you're bulking. Who gives a fuck if it's summertime? Right. Massa Cruel should be the name of the game. And then, fuck it. That's all I gotta say. Don't stop the grind. So, I will see you tomorrow for... Uh, I can't, I can't even say, like, I can almost guarantee, like, I can see you tomorrow for a guaranteed nasty fucking chest pump. Now, where that chest pump happens, what gym, that, I can't be so sure of. So, I guess we'll just have to see tomorrow and find out. I'll see you then.